Keep going. Who's this is a chronicle. Who's he going to take a picture of? So tell us what happened. What happened? <laughs> we eloped. We got on a train and went to Sacramento. And at Sacramento, we had to change and get on a bus. The train didn't take us clear to Reno. So while we were in Sacramento, my dad was a businessman and a salesman, and he was in Sacramento at that time, and I was so positive that he would be walking into the depot and say, what are you doing here? So you were scared. <laughs> huh? You were scared. Sure. But your dad didn't know you guys were there. Uh-uh. He didn't go into the station. I mean, Sacramento's a big place. Why should he go into a train station? So he went into the station. I mean, I, we, we waited, and we got on the bus, and we went up, and we had breakfast at some town. I forgot. I, if you did, named it, I'd say yes, but it's some town before you get to Reno. They stopped at 7.30, and we had breakfast, and then we got off the uh, bus, started walking around, checking things out. Where's the courthouse? That way. Where do you sign up to get married? It's up that way. Were you nervous? Did you have second thoughts? No, I loved him. He was going to come home to me. No. I was so stupid. I didn't know, I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. Um, and you already knew you weren't going back to, to high school. I didn't even think about school. All I knew was that I was going to get married. And he was going to come home. And Were you worried about the outcome of the war? Oh no, worry? I didn't worry about anything. <laughs> I was 16, almost 17, the world I had it by the tail. I knew it all. Oh, you just couldn't tell me anything. I was a little smart aleck. <laughs> and you had your roller skates? Many minutes the roller skate. His girlfriend was my best girlfriend, but she introduced us. But it was another year before we got together. He was skating with me with one of the skates, the things, a couple of skate, and he asked me to skate, and I skated with him. And we were enjoy talking away and everything. She sat on the side of the thing, took her skates off, and he came out and said, What's the matter? She says, Take me home. He took her home, and so they came back. Coming back to the skate rink, started skating with the skate living. Where for Emma? I took her home. You took her home, yeah. He said, We broke up. You broke up? Yeah. She got jealous. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> you want to ride home? Sure, why not? <laughs> so I gave you a ride home. And I saw him at the rink a couple more times. And I got a couple more ride rides home. I pretty soon he kissed me good night. <laughs> anyway, we're back in Reno, so we find out where the out, out, outhouse, quarter house, courthouse was. So they asked our names, and we told them. I said Elizabeth Ann Blocker, and Bob kind of looked at me funny, and he said afterwards, "I didn't know your name was Elizabeth." <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's funny. laughs> was he nervous? Huh? Was he nervous? I don't know. He just said, I didn't know your name was Elizabeth. Where do we get married? Well, I just judge upstairs. You go upstairs and get married up there. And the judge didn't ask you how old you were? Well, they just gave us a paper and said, it said... Uh, so it's Reno. They don't care. That was the point of going to oh, Reno? Oh, yeah. Age. 18. Age. 21. <laughs> He was 18 going on 19. I was 16. The next week I was going to be 17. Nobody else us anything. Paid him $3. I think we paid the, he paid the judge. I don't know what he gave him. Maybe $5. Anyway, so there was another couple that wanted to get married too. So we were both standing outside the door. And the judge comes in. He said, well, can I help you? We want to get married. We want to get married. Oh, well, come on in. I'll marry you both. So I had a double wedding. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. It wasn't funny at the time. Oh. I knew it all. I was a smart aleck. So 
As we walked around the town later that evening, we went to the show, saw a picture about the flight. I thought I'd never forget it. We had a Chinese dinner, came home the next day. I got kind of blank in there when we came home. I went home, and we didn't tell our folks right away. My mother said, the second time we went roller skating, my mother said, uh, well, I came home from the rink. She said, Betty, I want to talk to you. But uh, somebody called me tonight. I don't believe her. I have my stuff in my room, laying on the bed. Th uh, a counter in a little closet. I have wedding noises. I got a wet call today. Oh, said you and Bob went to Reno and got married. They did? Hmm. Well, did you or didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I can have it in all, don't you? You can. Well, if you do, Bob and I'll run away and get married when I'm 18. I'll be 18 in the year. So that was my threat. So, she went to see a lawyer, which I never knew about, a judge, which I never knew about. I told him, my daughter's eloped. She's married. I mean, you know, what am I going to do about it? I, would, I wanted to get her an annulment. She said, no way. That is, long story. <laughs> she doesn't tell me that till later, later. So he says, well, you know, she might be pregnant by now. And so, uh, well, she might be. Okay. Let them make their mistake. If they made a mistake and you butt in and uh, make them, she'll hate you all the worse. If she's the way you say she is. Which is what? Sassy? Very sassy. Did you teach me to be sassy? No, you just inherited it. <laughs> okay. So, my dad came, well, my dad sent me a telegram. Congratulations on your marriage. I love you. I'll see you soon. Dad. He was in Sacramento. He came home. Congratulations. Well, we want to go someplace. Here's my car. Take my car. So, so he just approved it from the get-go? Did approve, yes. Why do you think that was? Was he just that type of dad? He was very. He loved mean. me. Did he like dad? Oh yeah, he and oh oh he and my dad got along great. Uh, he <laughs> for one year, Bob worked in uh, uh, San Jose in the summer before we went together, and Bob and your dad got really acquainted because Bob worked in uh, Bob worked in some. What did I say the first one? San Jose. San Jose. San Jose. Bob worked in San Jose and Bob had, Bob had a, uh, Bob, Bob, my dad had a headquarters and he stayed all the week long at Salinas. So Bob and my dad would go back and forth together. And my dad would buy some beer. <laughs> they became beer buddies. <laughs> 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 Bob's just barely 18. He hasn't even 18 yet, not till August. So, they got better acquainted, and we stayed married, and he went off to the service, and that summer I got a job at a bakery, and I worked, and he got wrote me a lot of letters. I went down to Los Angeles to visit my grandparents for about a week and uh, have some cookies. And came home. he came home in August for two weeks. That's when we had this picture taken. Because mm. we, we had a little tiny picture taken of us when we got married. I don't know, it's uh, someplace around, but one of those where you can sit in the camp and the thing. And we weren't into pictures. It was kind of expensive, you know. We weren't into them that much. So then, went back to Farragut. And they went down to Washington to another state, to another place in Washington State. 
when he got transferred down to Bremerton, Washington, and assigned to the USS California. It was still being revamped from the war, from being bombed, sunk in Pearl Harbor. So then, telegrams back and forth. I hopped on a train, I went on the train. We had to transfer someplace, got up to Seattle. I got up to Seattle. Well, in the meantime, he had a house for me. I was supposed to clean house for our keep. So he needs me at the train. We take the ferry across the, across from Seattle to Bremerton. And I think it was there for three months. So he had every so many days off, and then every so many days he had to stay on the Did he like the Navy during that time? Who likes that service? Well, I don't know. That's why I ask you. He didn't? No. Would he complain about it, or you could no. just tell? No, he never complained about it. That was his life. That's what he had to do. Was he concerned about going to the far Pacific? What's it called? The East Pacific? West it was just a job. South Pacific. It was a job. He was a painter. And then he did other maintenance work. But was he concerned about going into the active duty, getting shipped off to... No? That was just life. That was just what you do. Yeah. And his brothers were already in the Army fighting in the South Pacific, right? Keith was the one that got in those. He was in the Aleutian Islands. Keith and Kenny. Uh, Keith was up there in a lot of battles. He got quite a few Purple Hearts. Kenny got a Purple Heart, too. Kenny was mainly in the Pacific. But they, who went in? Keith and Kenny and Bob. Ted, no, Ted could go. He had uh, infantile paralysis when he was in. <coughs> Five boys and four, four girls. Bob and Kenny, Keith, Ted. Ted couldn't go. Now, later on in life, wasn't it Keith and Kenny that would come over and they'd, they'd be bragging about shooting Japs and Dad was always uncomfortable about talking about any of it, right? Yeah, he would, he, Bob did not want to talk about the war. He couldn't stand it. He, uh, his job was, during, during battle, he, before battle, he, his, his station was up at the crow's nest most of the time. So, when the battle thing went off, when the alarm went off, we're going to have a battle, they sc scrambled to their battle stations. So he goes down the crow's nest, down, 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 to pass the ammunition. When he comes home from one of his, I mean, when they came, when he came back from duty in, on the ship, the crow's nest was shot down. The guy was killed. Hmm. That's Bob's, that Bob's station. Wow. Just before that happened, Bob bought his Navy tailor made uh, sailor outfit. He bought it for, for $50, $20, I don't know. So, who were that long? I remember him telling the story about the, the ships being on maneuvers and one of the ships ran into theirs. That was the only story I ever remember. They were, they, they were in dry dock out of the Pacific, middle of the Pacific. They had things that they put around the ship and pumped all the water out. So in the middle of the ocean, they're in dry dock. I mean, the, there's no water, so they can uh, work on the ship. Work on the ship. But people died, and he was on oh, duty, yeah. and he could have been killed. He was on duty, or else he would have been sleeping down where it hit the. Yeah, right, right. When that when that happened, yeah. Well, he wasn't in the crow's nest. I, I, that may have been before the crow's nest was hit. I don't. I don't remember. A lot of things I didn't. Not only didn't don't remember, but I didn't pay attention to. I mean, war. It's it's beyond me. I mean, I'm 16. I'm actually. Ten in many ways. And 
God had a plan. He had a plan and I had nothing to do with it. I just said, okay, Lord. He saw the end from the beginning. Even though you were a child, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were enemies, and during that time you had no idea what God had planned for you. And you were going to preach the to your kids. The strange thing too is, I was baptized when I was 12. I went to a Catholic boarding school. I was like, a little bit of a problem at home that they couldn't make, make me obey. So sent her to Catholic school. We promised we won't teach her Catholicism, but I learned a lot. Uh, but I never, they never taught me anything except I just learned Catholicism that if I didn't, if I wasn't baptized, I was going to hell. Period. My grandmother had already told me that when I died, I was going to heaven and I was going to see Jesus and, and the streets were going to be paved with gold, beautiful stones and everything was beautiful. I knew all about Jesus. I knew that he loved me and no ifs, ands, or buts, I was going to heaven. And so I didn't, I didn't worry about nothing. I was going to heaven. My grandmother told me I was. I was going to be with Jesus. And Jesus is God. I know I didn't, it, it didn't really connect that way. I did learn that in Catholic school for positive, that Jesus was God. But, but it didn't make too much sense, I mean, still. So, I This knew. grandma was Grandpa Lou's second wife, which wasn't actually your mom's mom. No. Your mom's mom died early, young. She died when my mother was 14. Yeah, so you never knew her. You never knew her. No, but my grandmother no, I that know. I knew. Yeah. The only grandmother. Uh, do you want some more? No, thank you. And do you want to take any home? No, thank you. So she yeah. was Presbyterian. Yes. And my grandpa had been Baptist. My mother was raised in the Baptist church. My mother turned against the Baptist church, against my grandfather, to a certain extent because she could not go uh, to a movie on Sunday because it was a sin to go to a church. She could not go to dances because that was a sin to dance. So, so my grandfather was very strict. He was never the loving, loving type that my grandmother was. Did your grandpa become Presbyterian? Oh yeah, that's what they joined the press and they they joined down in Los Angeles. And Robert Munger, he's the one that baptized me, and he was a very famous pastor. I've got a book written by him. Anyway, uh, Bob Munger, like I said, baptized me because I, so that I wouldn't go to hell. So when you say Grandpa Lou was not loving, you mean he was just kind of old-fashioned and it wasn't really, maybe that's how he was brought up and he didn't know how to express love? or That's the way they were. Men did not show love. Men were the head of the house, they, you know, and they made the money, and uh, even my dad, although my dad was, was loving in very many ways. He was a very, t I was, I was closer to my dad than I was my mother. My mother didn't know how to show love. And your dad didn't, he never expressed faith in Christ though, right? Oh no, his, his mother, oh, in fact, uh, he and I had a big battle after my mother died at times. I was trying to... Your dad and his mother had conflict? Or what were you going to say about that? My dad... You said... His mother became a... What's... Seven Day of Dennis, and there's another one. Seven Day of Dennis, what's the other one? Mary Baker Eddie, isn't that Seven Day Adventists? Yeah. Well, anyway, my, my dad's mother became this, and she knew the head of this cult, and my dad never accepted that. He went, when I was baptized, my mother went begrudgingly to watch me sprinkled. The pastor talked to me a little bit about Jesus, and I agree. But my mother never, she, she just never wanted to get involved.